Want to learn engineering and science? Well, you've tuned in to the right channel. Hit subscribe and press the bell icon and never miss an update from us. Hi there guys, how are we doing? This is your friend and tutor Manas and in today's tutorial, we're going to be talking about a very special method, method of sections and with this method you can actually find the axial force in any particular member of a given truss. So let's take up an example and let's see how this method can be applied. So here we go. Find the actual force in the member DE of the truss using method of sections. Now guys, this is going to be tip number one. Whenever you try to solve any problem based on plane truss, always try to calculate the reaction at supports. So initially we'll be getting the values of RA and RC. How can that be done? Let me show you. So I'm going to be using this equation of equilibrium summation of all the forces in y direction is equal to zero. If you can see clearly RA and RC are upwards and hence positive. RA plus RC. These two are downwards that is 2 kN and 4 kN. So minus 2 minus 4 is equal to zero and let me rewrite this RA plus RC is going to be equal to 6. Let us say that this is going to be our equation number 1. Now with one equation you can solve only one unknown okay now we have two unknowns in the form of ra and rc and hence we need to have one more equation how can that be done let me show you we're going to take moment about point a okay if you watch carefully in this entire arrangement there are four forces acting ra rc four kilonewton and two kilonewton when you try to take the moment about point a this force RA will have no impact whatsoever. Why? Because this is passing through this point A. And since it is passing through point A, its moment is going to be equal to zero. So we are only left with three forces, two, four and RC. So I'm going to start off with RC. Okay. So let me write this uh, moment about point A is equal to zero. This is the force RC, force multiplied by this perpendicular distance that is AC. So RC multiplied by 6 and if you watch carefully this RC produces an anti-clockwise moment at A and we take anti-clockwise moments as positive all right remember that secondly we have this 2 kN force if I can make the line of action okay here we go all right I'm let me make a point over here this is the force and this is the perpendicular distance let us say that this is P this force is 2 now this 2 kN force produces a clockwise moment at A minus name of the force is 2 multiplied by the perpendicular distance that is AP. If you watch carefully, this is 60, this is 60, this also has got to be 60. Okay, all the angles are same and hence all the sides are going to be same. So this is also going to be 3, this is also 3, same stuff can be repeated here, 3 and 3. If this is 3, then this AP shall work out as 3 cos 60 and 3 cos 60 is nothing but cos 60 is how much? 1 by 2. 3 into 1 by 2 that is 3 by 2 3 by 2 is how much 1.5 okay all right so we have to multiply 2 with 1.5 done over now let's go ahead and try to find the moment of this 4 kN force all right so let us have the line of action here we go and let me make a point over here let us say this is point Q this is the force this is the perpendicular distance dropped okay name of the force is 4 multiplied by the perpendicular distance that is aq if you watch carefully aq can be written as ab plus bq bq is going to be equal to again 3 cos 60 which will ultimately work out as 1.5 so this distance from a to b is 3 3 plus 1.5 is going to be equal to 4.5 all right so aq in totality is going to be equal to 4.5 so 4 multiplied by 4.5 is going to be equal to 0. So we have got all the forces worked out. We just need to solve this equation. So RC can also be written as, let me show you. This is going to be 3. This is going to be 18. 18 plus 3 is 21. So it's going to be 21 over 6. All right. So on solving this, you're going to get the value of RC is equal to 3.5 kilo newtons. Okay. You can put the value of RC over here. So RA is going to be equal to 6 minus 3.5, which will ultimately work out as 2.5 kN. So let me write this also 2.5 kN. So these are the reaction at supports. Now in the next step, we'll go ahead and try to use this method of section. 
to find the axial force in this member DE of the truss. All right. Okay, guys, now that we have successfully calculated the reactions at supports, we'll go ahead and we'll try to find the axial force in this member DE of the truss. Okay, I'm going to be using this method of sections for this purpose. And so let's go through the rules of this particular method. Rule number one says that the section should be passed through the members and not through the joints. Okay, so DE is that member in which the actual force is to be found out. Okay, so you can have a section like this. Please see where the mouse is hovering, or you can have a section like this. So let me have a section like this, this way. All right, it is passing through this member DE, and apart from that, it is also passing through DB and AB. Okay, so you can calculate actual force in DE. Apart from that, you can also calculate actual force along DB and AB also. Okay, fine. What about rule number two? Rule number two says that this section should clearly divide the truss into two separate portions. So one portion is towards the left, while the other is towards the right. It's very clear. Rule number three is of utmost importance. Why? Let me show you. Forces acting are these. So these are the members being cut, and these are the forces. Okay. The forces are tensile in nature. Let me tell you. Uh, the names of those forces are here. F of D E along the member D E. Similarly, F of D B and F of A B. Okay. Now the nature of these forces are such that they are approaching this section line from both the direction, from the left and from the right. All right. Now if you watch carefully, we have three unknowns in the form of f of dE, f of dB, and f of AB. And in order to solve three unknowns, we need three equations. And those three equations are summation of f of x zero, f of y zero, and moment is equal to zero. Okay. Now let us go ahead and try to use this equation to get to the values of all these unknown actual forces so guys we've got the values of reactions at a are at c we'll go ahead and we'll try to find the actual force in this member de of the truss okay to start off i'm going to be using this moment equation so summation of moment is equal to zero now this moment equation has to be framed about a specific point okay so let us see how many points we do have a b c d and e it appears as if there are as many as five points or shall I say we have five options and amongst these we need to select the best option. So basically what we're going to be doing is we'll be um, using a hit and trial approach for this. Okay. Let us say what happens if we take the moment equation about point A. Now since point A is towards the left of the section, the forces towards the right are to be considered. Okay. Now let me give you a tip. Better to have one equation with one unknown than to have one equation with two unknowns. Okay, so if you select point A as the point about which moment is to be taken, this FAB is approaching A and hence its moment is going to be equal to zero. Or you can also say it will have no role to play in the moment equation or this is absolutely an inactive force when you take the moment about point A. The forces remaining are F of DB and F of DE. That means if you try to frame a moment equation about point A, these two forces will be the unknowns. And hence, there is going to be one equation and two unknowns. Absolutely undesirable. I am looking forward to one equation with only one unknown. And that unknown also would be better if it is f of dE. Okay. So I am basically looking for an equation in which f of dE is the only unknown. All right. So point A or taking moment about point A is not really an option. So let us jump over to point B. Since this is towards the right of the section, the forces towards the left of the section are to be considered. If you watch carefully, this F of AB and F of DB, both of them appear as if they are passing through this point B and hence their moments are going to be zero. That means they will have no role to play in the moment equation. Or you can also say that about point B, these two forces are absolutely inactive. The only force remaining is this one, F of DE. Okay, that means we have hit the bullseye. Here, when you take the moment equation about point B, you're going to have one single equation with only F of DE as the unknown. So let us go ahead and try to frame a moment equation about this point B. Okay, now if you watch carefully, this point B is towards the right of the section, towards the right of this section. And hence forces towards the left of the section are to be considered. So this is FAB, F of DB, and this is F of DE. And apart from that, we have two more forces. 2 kilonewton and this 2.5 kilonewton force. Now, 
these two forces will be inactive as I have already told you. They are actually passing through this point B itself and hence their moments are going to be zero. So let us start with force F of DE. Okay. So for that I am going to be drawing a line. This is the force. Okay. And this over here is going to be the perpendicular distance. Alright guys. Okay. That's the perpendicular dropped. Now if you watch carefully, this angle over here is going to be equal to 60 degrees. Okay. Since this is 60, this is also going to be 60. This is how much? This is 3. Okay. This is 3 meters. And this is also 3 meters. This is also going to work out as 3 meters. This is going to be 3 cos 60 and this over here will be 3 sin 60. Absolutely. Force multiplied by perpendicular distance. F of DE produces a clockwise moment at P. Hence, it has to be accompanied with a negative sign. Name of the force is F of DE multiplied by this perpendicular distance 3 sin 60. 3 sin 60. Okay. So F of DE done. What about this 2 kN force? Okay. Now this force appears as if this is headed towards the downside. This way. So this is the force, line of action of force 2 kN. This over here, this, let me try to make a point over here. This over here is going to be the perpendicular distance, this much. Okay. Force multiplied by the perpendicular distance. 2 kN force produces an anti-clockwise moment at point B and hence will take a positive sign. Plus, name of the force is 2 multiplied by perpendicular distance. This is the perpendicular distance. If you watch carefully, this is 3, okay, this is 60 degrees, then this distance over here is going to be 3 cos 60, simply, okay. So let me write this 3 cos 60, okay. So this force is also done. What's left? These two forces are not going to have any role to play, okay, as of now. Now, the only force left is this 2.5 kN force, all right. 2.5 kN force produces a clockwise moment at point B and hence it has to be accompanied with a negative signs. Negative number of the force is 2.5 kN multiplied by this is the force and this over here, this AB over here is going to be the perpendicular distance which is equal to 3 meters. So 2.5 multiplied by 3 and all of this stuff is equal to 0. So we have one equation all right, in which F of DE is the unknown and F of DE let me tell you if you solve this equation is going to work out as negative of root 3 or you can also say that f of de is going to be equal to minus 1.732 kilo newton so that is the value of f of de okay so let me highlight this this is an answer okay <coughs> All right. Now, as far as the problem is concerned, we only needed to find the value of actual force in member D. But I'll take this as an opportunity and I'll go ahead and I'll explain you how the actual force of the remaining two members, that means DB and AB can be calculated. So the two equations remaining are summation of all the forces in X direction is equal to zero and in Y direction also equal to zero. But I'll go ahead and use this equation initially. Okay, now let us try to work out the forces acting in the x direction. So we've got this force f of ab towards the right hand side and hence positive. I'm considering, now right now I'm considering this portion, okay, the portion towards the left of the section only. All right, so f of ab is headed towards the right hand side and hence positive f ab. What else is there? This force f of de, this is also towards the right and hence again positive plus f of de. Is there any other force? Yeah, there is. This F of DB is going to have two components. So let me let me try to make this. This is 60 degrees and over here it's going to have a component this way. And if I can write this, um, this is going to be what you call F of DB cos 60. It's going to have one more component in the downward direction here. F of DB sine 60 okay so f of db cos 60 is towards the right and hence we're going to use a positive sign f of db cos 60 and all of this stuff is going to be equal to zero okay let us say this is equation number one 
okay now as of now we only know the value of f of de so in order to get the value of f of ab you need f of db also all right or you can say other way also in order to get the value of f of db you need f of ab okay so we cannot go ahead with this equation anymore so let me frame another equation this one summation of all the forces in y direction is equal to zero if you watch carefully we are considering this portion okay the portion towards the left of the section if you watch carefully 2.5 kN is headed upwards all right so let me take that as positive 2 kN is downwards let me take that as negative apart from that we have this force also this one f db sin 60 this is downwards and hence negative minus f of db sin 60 and is there any other force left no it's going to be equal to zero now you just need to solve this equation are you going to get the value of f of db is equal to 0 0.5773 kilo newtons okay that's it now let me highlight this this is also an actual force in member db of the truss so the only member in which actual force is to be calculated is this one f of ab this is only lift all right so let us go ahead and try to do that so essentially what i'm going to be doing is i'll put this value f of db over here and f of de over here and on solving this equation you are going to ultimately get the value of f of ab and f of ab will ultimately work out as 1.443 kilo newtons that's it so guys that was all from my side for today if you've got any doubts or queries do write them down in the comment section below i'll be very happy to answer them and if you believe that this video tutorial has added value to your knowledge of engineering mechanics then do like and share this video subscribe to this channel and also recommend this channel to your friends and classmates so that all of them can benefit i'll be coming up with more such lectures on engineering mechanics until then it's a wrap this is manas patnaik signing off take care have a great day and keep learning